hello from my absolutely gorgeous porch at the Masai Mara. Welcome to the safari vlog. As you can tell, you missed a bit. So let's rewind. Even though I know I've started the vlog elsewhere, this is still the first time I'm filming myself and it feels really awkward. What I just want to say is it's so weird travelling at night time. So my flight's at nine or quarter past nine this evening. So I've just been lingering around all day with nothing to do. I've watched YouTube, finished packing, got ready, dyed my grey hairs. So you all think I'm young. Um, and uh, it's only three o'clock. <laughs> so six more hours to go of this awkward day. I'm so happy with my luggage. I bought this North Face bag specifically for this trip. I've wanted one of these all my life. I just had no reason to get one. But when I found out that I had a 15 kilogram luggage allowance for two weeks and it had to be in a soft sided bag, I thought, I know just the one. So I've just dropped the cats off, poor boys. I didn't film them because they were screaming in the car. Um, but the category they're in is so nice. It's got a little TV for them, it's got a webcam so I can see them. But they've got a glass window so that you can see between the pens. And next to my cats is a Sphinx cat. So they're probably gonna shit themselves when they see that. Like, Ugh. what's happening to cats here? <laughs> All right, next stop, Starbucks. After that, airport. Look at me. Oh, do I look cool? <laughs> You think I'm joking, I'm not. Um, just got to the airport now. Flying from Manchester Terminal 1. I never come to Terminal 1, it's always Terminal 2. So I'm lost. Well, not, you know, I'm not lost. But I'm not um, seasoned. I've just got to the Aspire Lounge, Terminal 1. They don't have any hot food at all, they said that the hot plates broke. So I've got here salad bits, pear and cheese, and two gin and tonics because I can't even tell you how hot it is in Manchester Airport. I am like really sweating and um, it's boiling. So I might eat this and then go and see if I can find some food to take on the plane with me. I don't, I, surely they're gonna have a meal on the plane. It's a long flight. Um, I don't know, but that, that's, that's not tea. This is the lounge in case anybody was interested. It's perfectly fine, that's not amazing. If you watch the Florida videos, then you'll know that the other lounge in Terminal 2, I loved. So yeah, this, this is okay. I'm gonna just I'm gonna sit here for half an hour, drink as many gin and tonics as I can. I've decided not to eat that cheese because it looks like it's been sat out there for a very long time. And <laughs> because I don't know what this food and water situation is gonna be like in Africa, I've packed loads of Imodium just in case. I don't want to get poisoned at Manchester Airport. I'll tell you what I'm actually here for then. So I'm going on a safari, as you will have seen. It looks like the trip of a lifetime. It, it's I can't wait. I can't wait to see it really. I've purposefully not done much research and I've purposefully not watched loads of YouTube videos of people going on safari and things like that because I want to experience it all you know fresh I, I don't know what to expect I don't know what it's going to be like exciting um, I'm going on my own which is um, weird it's the first time I've ever been on holiday by myself uh, I've traveled alone before but never actually had the holiday side thing so it's an interesting one and I'm used to spending time on my own I live alone so let's just go for it that's the wrong way. I'm flying from Manchester to Dubai now, and then I've got a three hour layover, and then Dubai to Nairobi. Staying in Nairobi tonight, and then tomorrow morning I go on a little light aircraft to the Masai Mara in Kenya. So 
three night safari in Kenya and then um, another light aircraft to Tanzania where I have a three night safari in the Serengeti and then another light aircraft to Zanzibar where I have like three day beach holiday and hopefully get to swim with dolphins so it's gonna be it's gonna be it is gonna be amazing it's 7 30 I left the lounge in search of food and all the restaurants have stopped serving food so I'm in Burger King I don't even have the urge and I've come to get a drink I don't know why this airport is so hot but it's seriously sending me under and um, there's no ice in the machine <laughs> sitting on the floor because I've just made my little plane bag so this big oh Bessie can go in the overhead locker and get out my way and this little carrier bag has got what I actually need in it so it's got my eye mask because I'm ready for a nap I think that flying at night has been really weird because it's like today's being wasted and I could have been on holiday but I'm actually going to sleep well I sleep on a plane anyway but I really am going to sleep well on this plane because I'm actually tired because it's actually nice time so I've got my eye mask bottle of water, eye drops and lip balm. I can't go anywhere in the world without eye drops and lip balm. And then I've got a powder, which I've just bought from Boots. So I just got a little crap one because I'm just going to probably throw it. Because um, I'm ugly. And the guy sat next to me on the plane might be the love of my life. So I might need to, you know. Trashy book. Trashy, trashy, trashy rubbish. Um, <laughs> can't wait to finish it. Um, if the love of my life or potential love of my life is sat next to me, that's not coming out. I'm gonna pick up one of the other four books I've got. So yeah, so now that can just go under the seat. Bob's your uncle. I'm already sick of carrying this hat around. I hope I actually wear it because it's doing my nutting. I should have bought one of those hat clips, but I didn't. So that's the update. Okay, the reason why I actually started filming and then I got sidetracked on my little description of my bag situation was because it's now time to take a malaria top. So, to go to Africa, there's a lot of prep. Um, I had to have loads of vaccinations. Some of them were at my doctor's for free, but one of them I had to go to a travel clinic. Oh, that was yellow fever. And um, that was six, 60 pound or 60 odd quid. And then I also had to spend, I think it was 50 pounds for malaria tablets. So I needed to start them two days before I left. Um, and then I've got to have one every night at the same time, um, continuing up until one week after I get back. So bottoms up. There's the plane, double decker, absolutely massive. This is the most calm I've felt about traveling in such a long time, which I don't understand. Thank you. That's where you board. And this is me, row 43A. Gonna be good for getting off. This screen is huge. I don't know if you can tell me, there's my hand. It's really big. <laughs> so lucky, honestly. Uh, I love Emirates. The metal cutlery, how exciting. And I've gone for a glass of red wine and some water. That food is really good. Yeah, I've had it. Yeah. I had um, I had again, the cheese and crackers and the red wine, and honestly, just cheese and red wine is it's what dreams are made of. Um, time for sleep. Oh, also, I'm watching Pride and Prejudice, the um, the BBC one. Don't know what year it is. The Colin Firth one. <gasps> I just said to mum a few weeks ago that I was dying to watch it, but then I got around to it. It's on here. I'm like, oh, thank you. I was going to go for a walk upstairs, but not allowed. My company. Oh, it's not even. I thought it was hand soap. It's not. It's hand and body lotion and an odor toilet. How nice. Where is the soap? Oh. Right, let's give this a go. It's 33 degrees in Dubai this morning. So this is Dubai Airport. Absolutely massive. It goes down there as far as I can see. 
I don't know how it's split into terminals or sections or whatever, but I know that I'm in A at the minute and I need to get to B. of lifts to the train later and I made it to the B side. Can I go and see if I can find this lounge and then see if I can get in. I will find that it's an, it's an much nicer flying experience. Got hash browns, chicken sausages, beans, grilled tomatoes and toasts and orange juice. Yeah, nice. So I'm gonna drink that whole thing of water and probably wait an hour and then I might get a coffee and a croissant. And then it'll be time to go again. Back on the plane again for the last flight for today. I will see you when we land. First glimpse of Africa. I've literally slept this whole flight. And there it was. What a great flight. The seat next to me was empty again. Like seriously, my look on planes is just up there. Welcome to Kenya. You can't see it now, but it just saw a zebra. So this is the Nairobi National Park. 170 kilometers squared and it's got all the big five in it. Here's my room at the Tamarind Tree Hotel just for tonight. It's a nice room. Look, looks in here. One of these has got to be the toilet. One shower. I don't know why I didn't just open the door. Yeah, nice sink. And have a look at this welcome pack that I was given at the airport. The airport experience was really good, I'll tell you about that in a sec. Um, but apparently there are some Swahili phrases that I need to learn in there. I've got a map of Africa. It's like they don't know that I've got a 15 kilogram <laughs> weight limit. I feel absolutely knackered. It's 20 past eight. I've just come down to the restaurant to get something to eat. I'm not really hungry, I could have done without, but I thought, let's go and have a look at it. So it looks really nice, and they've got an outside seating area, um, which is full, so that's why I've got to sit inside, but I feel so much like a zombie that I, I really don't mind. I've got a gin cocktail. My battery's gonna die, but this is a coconut butternut, um, yeah, yeah, coconut butternut soup, and it's delicious. And a quesadilla. It was like 21 pound. So, can't complain with that. I don't know why travelling makes you so tired when I've literally, I've slept so well today, I've slept on both the flights, yeah, I'm still knackered. So, I'm getting picked up at nine o'clock tomorrow. So, I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Yesterday was such a good travel day, you know. The bed's a mess, whatever. Um, I'm also running late, it's now about 25 to nine. I'm getting picked up at nine, but I need to go and get breakfast, so. But um, I wanted though to tell you about what happened yesterday, because it was so good, so. I filmed a bit of the flights, there's not much to say is there, but the flights were lovely because um, I slept through most of it, it went right in the blink of an eye. Yeah, so the flights were good, but then when I got to the airport at Nairobi, as soon as we got off the plane we got on one of those little buses and then you go through to customs and everybody else was just going through, but I had a little sign with my name and this lovely lady that like greeted me as soon as we got off the bus and um, she took all my bags off me and then fast tracked me through customs, I wasn't expecting any of this, it was a big queue. She took me down this priority lane, um, got my bags, and then I was straight in a car. Um, I met the guy um, from Chelly and Peacock Safaris, who I think are taking over from here. And um, he gave me the little satchel booklet pouch thing that I showed you yesterday um, and brought me here. And then, yeah, I just came in, I went to sleep. I, I felt like I couldn't do it. Um, I went down and had some tea, which was really nice. The hotel's really nice downstairs. Um, and then I came up and went to sleep again while I was on the phone to Emma for half an hour. I woke up late today. I was trying to get ready. I found out that I've got a foundation explosion. I've only got a 15 kilogram luggage allowance. So I was trying to make everything as light as possible. So instead of bringing my foundation as I normally would, I put it in these little tiny pots, which the girl from the makeup county gave me. Um, put that in a Ziploc bag and thank God I did because they've like gone everywhere. But I've bought only just enough foundation for every day for the trip. Um, and now it's all over this bag. So, I might only film half of it, then I might, be, oh my god, I like a ghost. What? <laughs> Thank you. So, driving from the airport yesterday, we drove past the Nairobi National Park, and the driver was telling me that that's, oh, and I saw a zebra. 
and the driver was telling me that they've got all the big five in that national park and he said that they're not called the big five and just in case you don't know what the big five is it's five animals it's a let me get this right a buffalo lion leopard rhino an elephant so when people come on safari they always say they want to see the big five like giraffe isn't on there you might be thinking why is giraffe not on there well it's because it doesn't go by size so it's a mind of information now it is based back on the day of poachers um, they were the five hardest animals to kill and you got a trophy for hunting those and that's why they are the big five 8.38, I'm getting picked up in 20 minutes, need to go and eat some food. I've just gone for this with some mango juice and a coffee. The clothes that I bought for this trip are like proper safari, you'll see. But like safari fancy dress costume, I was <laughs> I was thinking, am I gonna look like an idiot? But I'm excited having breakfast, I'm gonna quickly show you around. Look at those two ladies, you see them. There's the pool, look at the ladies again. Everyone's sat here wearing safari clothes, <laughs> so I feel all right now. And I've forgotten to put insect repellent on. Like, that's the number one rule, everyone. Don't forget insect repellent, what have I done? I've got an insect repellent, and it's buried in my bag. And it's now 10 to 9, so I'm getting picked up in 10 minutes. I'm trying to make this as fast as I can, and I thought, just calm down, Kate. What I also didn't tell you about yesterday, was when we were driving along, you see, just, it was only a 20 minute drive, but it was really interesting because you see so much at the side of the road so there was a guy walking along actually he had a, he had a bag of kindling um that's what it looked like and he was actually carrying it on his head but he was wearing like a suit and he had his arms by his sides just walking along normally oh by the way walking along at the side of the motorway normally just balancing it on his head like it was amazing i was making him a laugh telling yesterday <laughs> i said i went camping a few weeks ago or well, last week and we bought a bag of kindling and when I was thinking of how to carry it, it never even crossed my mind to carry it on my head. <laughs> but you know, what a skill. And there was also a guy carrying, well, no, pulling. He was like a horse, he was pulling along this three-wheel cart thing that was stacked. It looked like the Grinch's sleigh when I mean, he's got all the presents in it. And he was pulling it, it was barely getting anywhere because he was going up a ramp, which was a motorway slip road. And I was like, Whoa. like, not safe. Okay, I really need to go and meet this guy. So now, what's happening is I'm getting picked up. I hope that I recognise my guy. I think I would, but yesterday was so much of a blur. Yeah, so I'm getting picked up and we're going to the Wilson Airport, which isn't the Nairobi main airport where I landed yesterday. And I'm going on a little plane, a small plane. And it's only a 40 minute trip to the Masai Mara game reserve where I'll get picked up and taken to my camp. This is why there's a 15 kilogram luggage allowance. It's because of these light aircraft. So I've got a story to tell you about that, um, which I will do so when I'm killing time at the airport. But the flight's at half 10 and I'm getting picked up at nine. So it's not like you've got to be there three hours before or anything like that, um, which is quite nice. Okay, this is the airport. If that's our plane, then that's better than I expected. I was expecting smaller. I mean, it's still pretty small. <laughs> And propellers, but I can cope with that, I think. So Jason's gone now, he's left me all alone. Um, I've got my flight number and things, so apparently the plane's just gonna pull up and you can see the number of the plane on the plane itself. So I know to look out for that and then they'll call it like you just heard, then I go to the boarding gate and then go on. Um, so in terms of what the story is about the wait, oh my God, I'm looking at the wrong thing again. Um, it's been dramatic and very, very stressful. So, you may not know this, but there's a 15 kilogram luggage allowance. Um, because these planes are so light, now not this one, I've already shown you this plane, that plane's like quite big. There are other planes knocking around, but I can't see any now to film them, they're absolutely tiny. And I think the next plane that I go on in a few days is gonna be one of those tiny ones. But the luggage, the weight limit is because of the limit that the planes can physically carry. So I was lying in bed a few days before I was due to, to leave for this trip, and I thought, if it is so strict, and these planes are so light. And what about me? Like, they need to take the weight of me into account because I am heavy, and obviously heavier than the average person. So I Googled it. Because Emma was like, no, don't be that, it'll be fine. I Googled it, and it says that if you're above 95 kilograms, you need to let the travel company know because you might need an extra seat. So I got in touch with the travel company, and then, long story short, like two hours before, my, oh no, it was five 
four hours before my plane set off to Dubai, I was told that it'll be okay if I do need an extra seat, that they're gonna cover it and it'll, it'll be fine and there will be seats available and all that, but oh my God, what an absolute nightmare. This is a Kenyan, Kenyan shilling. One of those, a thousand, it's about fiver. In Kenya, there's a ban on any single-use plastic. Well done, Kenya. Because actually, the climate summit is taking place here while well, I'm here. Um, so I was wondering what the water was going to come in. I was thinking maybe those um, cardboard bottles, but no, glass. So this weighs a ton. Oh my god, they've cut off the light. I was trying to get my boarding pass out to show the guy. My hands are shaking. <laughs> Now take you through our safety procedures and equipment. If you have We're any hand luggage, kindly feet. ensure it Three does not stops. block the aisle. Nor the but I get off at the second stop. Um, how weird is that? A plane that like is going to land and take off again. The noise cancelling, which helps because I can't hear them. Because it don't hear. I just put my head back, closed my eyes, and I was just thinking about other things. Um, when I thought, when I looked outside, I was like, oh, I was listening to Taylor Swift while this week. She said I was in a music video. <laughs> Me from a few years ago, but never got on this plane. Well done. She just said it's a three minute flight to the next stop. I can handle that. Cruising at low levels. But over there, well, our guy just said there's an ostrich over there, and I was looking and I couldn't see it. <laughs> I realised what he was looking at, and it was huge. I thought it was a tree, but it's an ostrich. And there's a wildebeest right here. That's an eagle that eats baby antelopes as well as rodents and stuff. Walking to the tent now. Yeah. Let me give you the grand tour of my room. So here's my terrace, balcony. It's a river view, but it's quite dry at the minute. And then going through here, which you have to keep zipped at all times because baboons and mongoose, mongoose will come in. So here is obviously the bedroom. I'm going to turn my own. Down here. Nice. And I have a torch because at night time, what I need to do is go out, stand in that corner, and flash the torch down the road, and somebody will come and. What is that noise? I think it's just birds, but. I'm just going to zip myself in. And then, yeah, somebody comes and escorts you <coughs> to the restaurant because you can't walk anywhere on your own. Um, so yeah, so nice bedroom. And then bathroom. Have sink. Here's the top, hang on, I have the light here. The light for that. Shower. Oh my God, I can hear all these noises. I really need to put some bug spray on immediately. <laughs> Toilet. 
This is the best bit. Look at this. There's another sink and... Are you ready? And, ooh, oh, there's a horrible bug! Ooh, an outdoor shower. Forget that. <laughs> Did you see that bug? I don't know if I got it. <laughs> right, I'm putting some insect repellent on immediately. I don't think I factored in the extent to which I don't like bugs. Can you hear him? You're hearing like weird noises all the time. I feel like I'm never gonna sleep. I feel like I can't relax. I can hear like the tent walls moving. I need to get used to it. But driving here was amazing. That vehicle is so cool. I wasn't expecting it to be like that. That was mint. I've just drive around in that literally all day which is good because that is what I'm here to do. Oh, oh, there's a girl. So it's not just me in the truck. There's another girl with me. Um, she's a solo traveler as well. She's about my age-ish. She's called Jenna. She's from San Francisco. So that's nice. It feels like I can hear bugs landing on the roof. It feels like it's raining, but it must be deep landing. I hope you can hear these noises. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> Okay, oh my god, a leaf just fell. Oh, and it's babies are behind it. You see, I'm zooming too far, but it's out of focus. Now I know that if I'm lying in bed at night and I hear a noise outside, it could actually be a warthog. Lunch started at one, so I could go and get lunch now. Finishes at half two. And then we're going on a game drive at four. I'm just taking it in for a minute. Lizard. I just need to go to the toilet and then I'm gonna go for lunch. Just like, it's the snakes in the toilet. Is there a spider under the toilet seat? I need to just get used to this absolutely lovely like it's amazing i've just been sat outside there for a while oh watching that warthog what a babe but the reality is this is really really freaky right we're in this together this is my room key under the rim. I had a wee. What a good girl, how brave. So that's my tent there. And here is the, well like the central point. There's all the tents along here, see there and there. had lunch and it was lovely and I sat with Jenna the girl from before Um the guy said to me do you want to sit with your friend or do you want to sit by yourself and I said oh, I'll sit by myself because I didn't want to impose myself upon her um, and then I thought oh god if she said that she's gonna think I'm rude oh there's more politics so I said hi Jenna do you want me to sit with you I won't be offended if you don't and she's like no come and join me and um, there's so many people alone when I walked into the restaurant before, I think there was four or five people sat there at a table by themselves. It's a lot more common than I thought it would be. So I really wouldn't let a bit on your own stop you from doing anything, ever. I think that's my speech over. So, oh, it's thundering. Um, do I put my hand to my ear? Can you hear that? I'm like a kids TV presenter. The guy before said that um, it can get chilly in the evenings and in the mornings, so when you're on your game drives, bring some heavy clothing. And that's what everywhere says when you Google it as well, it's quite cold, but I can't. 
can't see any way on God's earth that I'm going to be cold tonight. I'm a hot person anyway. Um, hat. I just don't think it's necessary. I'm like sweating now when it's four o'clock. How much is this temperature going to drop? And when we were driving from the airport to here, the two, the guy, our guide and the guy that was with him, both like wrapped up in a blanket on the drive. And I was warm, so I think maybe they think it's cool for African standards. For Chorley standards, I think I'm going to be okay. It's spit in a bit. I wonder if the game drive is cancelled in the rain. Compromise. I'm going to take a shirt. Um, it's really thundering now. I wonder if the game drive is going to be cancelled if it's like heavily raining and thundering lightning. When I checked the forecast before I came, it was showing sun, sun, sun. I'm here for three days. For those three days, it was thunderstorms, thunderstorms, thunderstorms. And then as soon as I leave, sun, 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 sun for the foreseeable. <laughs> what are the odds? Felt very high because it's me. Okay, the shirt's gone on because I just realised rain means bugs. So let's get covered up. Somebody comment below and tell me I look like Jungle Jane. Thank you. That's the restaurant where I ate before. I was thinking when I was in there that it reminds me of somewhere from Animal Kingdom. It looks very Animal Kingdom Lodge, as does everywhere. But then I thought, actually, this doesn't look like Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom looks like this. Oh my gosh, Zebra. Let me show you my setup. I've got a nice coffee, which comes with hot milk, which is lovely. Um, I'm just going to sit here, listen to the thunderstorm. Can you hear it in the background? Popping off. Before I go on my game drive in half an hour, which apparently will still be on if it's raining. And a guy called Dennis has promised me that I will see a lion. <laughs> this is fantastic. I feel like it's so... I don't know how to describe it. It's like really peaceful. Oh my gosh, it actually bounces. <laughs> So they put the cover down on one side, but left the other side it open. It's really raining now. There's a load of drafts out there, but I don't want to take the camera out. Skidding along this mud. I feel like driving this vehicle has got to be every guy's like dream. Oh. <laughs> Literally bouncing out of the seat. And there's a great big bird there. Oh, it's opened its wings. Oh, it's flying. It's taking off. And landed again. Chasing something. Oh, buzz. He said that he's gonna go um, try now to see if we can see some lions. Maybe a leopard. Apparently, the, I've just heard that a leopard is the hardest thing to find because they're um, solo animals, as opposed to a lion. Lion, which is in a pride. <laughs> we spun around in the mud two or three times. I literally went sideways. So now we're off-roading. We are literally following an elephant. Can you see it there? looking for a leopard. I think our guide is nuts in the best possible way because everybody else, you see that, that vehicle over there straight on, it's just a way of looking at it. We were actually going around all of these bushes. I just said to him, would the leopard be hiding under the bush then? He said, yeah, it could be under the bush or it could be on top of the bush. I wasn't looking on top. I wasn't expecting that. Staring straight at us before. Like, what are you doing? I was giving up now. This camera's nowhere near good enough. But, just seen that bird in my binoculars, and it's gross. It's got a bald pink head. I had to get out and have a wee behind the Jeep. Classic. Overnight, overnight, it'll be better. Yeah. Yes, that's what's oh, great. Zebra. This footage is awesome. 
careful. I'm just gonna delete all this. Just having a glass of wine at the bar before dinner. So we left just after four, and it's now nearly seven, so we were out for almost three hours. The obvious highlight was seeing the cheetahs. I don't know why it makes me so emotional, it's just really special. Um, they were great. He said that tomorrow. <laughs> The hell? He said that tomorrow we're going to go on a full day game drive. So we'll leave at 6.15 and then um, have breakfast out there and lunch out there and come back for dinner. Oh, I just got back to my room and somebody's been in a little turn dance at this. So it's been such a good day today. I've um, really, really enjoyed myself. This morning feels like absolutely ages ago. So we're going on a safari tomorrow at quarter past six in the morning which means I need to get up at half five so do I shower now in the dark which seems awful or do I do it in the morning which means an even earlier start and it's still gonna be in the dark oh they are slim pickings I don't know if I can face getting in the shower I can I'm literally worried about going to the toilet put down the covers and um, the lady said that you don't really need to because the nets are good enough but I'll take the double protection. That bathroom's looking pretty scary. Um, anyway, I had a really nice tea. I had um, carrot soup which was great. Let me show you something. I didn't film any of it because I had tea with Jenna so I didn't want to be that person. I was already that person at lunch, can't do it twice in a row. So, he wrote a word on the soup again. This time it was lovely. And it was lovely. And then it was lamb with mashed potatoes. And I said I didn't want to be that person. Obviously I take a picture of it. What a psycho. And then we had um, coconut tiramisu for dessert. Um, washed down with wine very very nice and then you have to get an escort back because so I said before about flashing the torch into the middle area to get someone and well, we had to wait to get an escort this way um, and he came in and he like people do everything for you it's so nice it's like they go out of the way so the guy un unzipped my tent for me like bent down and like dealt with the lock and all the keys and stuff it was so nice um, everyone here is so friendly they were all chatting how was your safari what animals did you see like, really really nice people When we were having tea, there was this horrible noise. It was like, <laughs> it really was. And we all looked at each other and we were like, what animal is that? And I was like, I said, it's only gonna get 10 times worse when we're in our tents alone at night. I can hear something outside, seriously. All right, it's gonna be a, put my noise cancelling headphones and a serial killer podcast on, because that's way more settling. is 5.52 in the morning, absolutely knackered. I had the worst night's sleep ever. 
even though I had my headphones on and a nice relaxing serial killer podcast on YouTube um, it's like my brain just knew and just could never shut off so I was waking up but when I finally went to sleep I was just waking up every two minutes um, I don't think it's nature life well, I'm not accustomed to it yet hopefully tonight because honestly that was like the worst night I've ever had I did shower last night just got it over and done with and when I got in bed um, put my legs under the covers and I touched something and I jumped out my skin and it was a hot water bottle <laughs> so that was very nice because it was quite cold it took me ages to warm up um, it's absolutely chucking it down by the sound of it not been outside yet but it's definitely raining not even woken up yet the first challenge is to get across this bridge it's so wobbly these things had a better night's sleep than me I absolutely love these vehicles they call them jeeps presents. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's an egg. There's an egg. We've got sausage and toast and egg and a pancake. Apple, orange, a bit of cake. Apple juice and water and coffee and tea. Ideal. Lunch was great. Um, I used the bathroom again. Just the back of the truck. So you say you're going to check in the spare tyre. <laughs> and now we're going to the river to hopefully see some hippos. Yeah, if I just said lunch was great, I meant breakfast. <laughs> Warthogs running everywhere, but I'll never be able to get one because they run off straight away. But I really like them. <laughs> There's a huge crocodile. On the bank. On the bank. Uh, oh, the sink. oh, I was looking in the water. It looks like a log. Oh. 
Really? That's a warthog hole. Like, Three or four are going there. Over there between the two rows of trees. There's just two giraffes casually walking along. No big deal. Just a little bit of 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 a flat on this camera and everything looks much further away than it is but if you said to me now where's this I'd say Great Hill by Chorley and that's all porridge in the distance we just did a three point turn in the road and now we're absolutely leathering it up this hill so I don't know what for but you must have seen something good or I mean like got wind that somebody's seen something good It was a rhino that we were coming to find. We've seen it. Very rare. So that was exciting finding that rhino. Risking our lives. Um, and now we've seen four of the big five. We're just missing the leopard. So elephants over there by the trees. I've heard of them. One, two, three, four, five ish. So it looks like we're going to do some off rooting again. By the river, looking at the hippos. How nice. What have we got? What little presents have we got now? We had chicken and fruit and some tropical juice and a piece of cake. It was good. Uh, it was an apple. We had an apple. And the travelling advice is you're not supposed to eat fruit that isn't peeled because it's been washed in the water that you're not supposed to have. So, um, wash my apple with a bottle of water. I hope it's going to be okay. I just saw a leopard right over there. safari vehicles go past they stop and have a little chat and um, but up there is the highest point and that's where we're going to go now I'm sure this is probably going to come across absolutely awful on camera <laughs> So in a couple of days time, I'm flying. 
way into the Serengeti, which is there. Look at the border. International boundary, no entry into Tanzania. So that's the border between Kenya and Tanzania. Got a male switch there. And a female over there. Manfred just said this is one of the small five. <laughs> <laughs> So I've just got back to the room, my tent. Um, what a, what an incredible day we've had. Never been on safari before, so I don't know what's normal, but I'm calling it as the most lucky day ever. Um, when we saw the rhino, our guide, Manfred, said that um, that was really rare. And then we saw the leopard as well, and that's also really rare. And then he said to see both on the same day is pretty much unheard of. But we've seen all the big five today, and people go on safari for a week and don't get to see that. And it's just happened. I mean, I don't know wh where we go from here, really. <laughs> I it's it's ruined the rest of the trip probably because today's been so good. Just the the vehicles that we've got are amazing. Um, you've seen what they look like, all open sides, open front, above the driver and stuff. So you, you feel like you're outside and there's you know uninterrupted views. Most of the vehicles that we're seeing are. actual big you know SUV off-roader vehicles so they've got real wind like actual windows that slide so the windows are open but you would feel like you were inside a vehicle and then the roof pops open and there's a post box gap so people are driving around stood up looking out of these tiny gaps I'm thinking I really wouldn't like that um might have that in my next place who knows but I'm so so chuffed got a bite on my ankle just realized um chuffed with the vehicles that we've got they're amazing our guide could not be any better he is so on the ball he drove us there to that rhino like a psycho um as he was driving along i was thinking we are cruising for a bruising <laughs> um i stumbled saying that because it sounds so unnatural coming out of my mouth but we really were we'll pull up at a place where there's quite a few vehicles all parked and let's say we're the last that we've just arrived There'll be Manfred will grab some binoculars, look out, suss out what's going on, and then the people that are already there, the guides that have been sat there waiting with their group, will say, right, so what are we looking at? And Manfred will tell them. Um, so I've been so lucky with him. I am just a lucky, lucky person on holiday. From having the empty seat next to me on the plane twice to the best safari vehicles, the best safari guide, and then seeing all the animals. So today, we've seen... And by the way, these are only the animals that I care about. We've seen plenty of birds and stuff which i haven't bothered to write down um but we've seen lions rhino crocodiles leopards cheetahs elephants zebras buffalo elands vultures storks baboons and a fish eagle um obviously pumbers we've seen loads of them i actually really like them they're one of my favorites um but yeah i need to stop saying um i've got a coffee from the restaurant and I'm just gonna come and sit down for a min before I go to the bar for a drink before tea. We're going for a game drive at, oh, I've been bitten twice on my ankle and it's itchy and I'm gonna get malaria. No, I'm not sitting on tablets. Um, going for a game drive at six tomorrow morning. It's getting earlier. So I didn't tell you any stories about yesterday's safari because I looked gross and I didn't want to film myself when I look gross but I've realised now that I'm going to look like this until I get home and I'm not going to get home and just film myself in the house going so on day one this happened I'm going to do it now instead so on day one this happened it was chucking it down before we went out so all the roads were really muddy and our van was slipping and sliding all over the place but our guide had with him a guy at the front I don't know if it was his friend or whatever um but honestly, they were like lads, 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 because they're both quite young. Um, they were both being silly, giddy. Like, I think that he was 
driving crazy on purpose because we went fully sideways so many times like seven or eight times you know it felt really it was fun it was it was great um but we kept getting stuck all the time as well because he kept going on these crazy routes and i said to him have you ever actually got properly stuck before and then they both looked at each other and were giggling and were like yeah many times <laughs> so it was just a totally different experience from today because obviously it's very bumpy on safari it was very bumpy today but not like yesterday because yesterday you spent more time out of your seat than in it you know really getting thrown around i think i said it earlier in in this video i actually banged my head on the bar that goes down the center of the roof of the jeep i mean and it, it, when i look back and it's unbelievably high like it must throw me like two feet up in the air it was ridiculous um so that's what yesterday was like oh and i've got notes on my phone so don't forget so that's what i keep looking at it was also funny because our guide just goes straight over to the animals so say there's an animal here There'll be all jeeps spotted around like that all looking at it and then we'll come charging in Whoop, stop right there <laughs> we'll be right in front of it which is great for us but it just seems mad we got stuck not not properly stuck obviously we got out but stuck for a while because we were driving along and then all of a sudden it was poof, like major car crash situation i thought he's written this jeep off what's happened um it was reversing back and forth like, um now you know what an engine sounds like but we were properly stuck and then we finally got out and we looked what we've been stuck in and it was a hole like it was basically a well it was a ginormous hole i can't believe the car was able to get itself out of there it took a bit um but i can't believe it wasn't damaged these vehicles are so so tough what else did i want to tell you about oh it's a sad story so the cheetahs which you saw yesterday the two that were walking around the jeeps they're two brothers so cheetahs are normally solo animals they hang by themselves but there was a pack of five brothers and all five just stuck together which was unusual how sweet but two died of natural causes and one was eaten by a lion so there's only two left and they were the two that we saw yesterday is that it oh yeah um and Manfred our guide he always goes hold on or when he does something like you hit something ridiculously hard and you really throw it about he goes sorry <laughs> no that was a bad impression it's like sorry no that wasn't it either i'll try and get it on film but it would be hard to what oh, is thundering again it'd be hard to know when he's going to do it because it comes out of nowhere oh and sour sour means like okay so if somebody says to you sour sour and you say back sour sour so when we've been looking at an animal and we're ready to go he goes sour sour and we go sour sour and then we leave i think that brings you up to speed on what happened yesterday i filmed more today i think so you've pretty much seen what we did today um and i've gone through all of the animals that we saw oh that was one so this was funny so when we were looking at the lions this morning oh by the way i was crying when i saw them <laughs> um Dennis who yesterday promised me that I'd see a lion we had like a bit of banter back and forth you know it was like a big thing that everyone was talking about because every time I saw him I was like you've promised me a lion and I said if you if I've not seen a lion by the time I go home you need to get here because I've got words with you you know <laughs> um but as we were looking at the lions we'd just seen him I'm there with like tears coming down my face like <laughs> everyone else is normal I'm like <laughs> and then Dennis drove past and he looked at me and he was like ah oh, lions and I was like <laughs> <laughs> so that was really nice but and we were talking about we watched them for ages and when we were talking about them oh we've got an, another guy in our group today he's called patty um he um is indian but he's lived in america uh, yeah america for 20 years he's had a year off basically he's spent like nine months traveling and he's got loads left to go he's got to go back home to get a new passport because his passport's full and um, i didn't even know that was a thing i don't know anybody that well traveled but um he was asking manfred about what lions eat and he's going through different animals and then he said <laughs> so funny but I bet it's not gonna be funny to say but he said um did he eat lion and manfred went lion i asked i might just delete that out because that's like a story for me not really very funny for you this safari is pretty much it's been as i expected most of the way what i was not expecting was to be freezing cold 
it was cold today this morning it was chilly it wasn't sorry i am been dramatic it's not freezing it's chilly like i've just obviously washed my hair um so it's wet so i've got a chill i wasn't expecting this i would have bought a coat but when you google what's packed for a safari it says bring a coat but i just thought no there's no way that you need a coat because i checked the weather and the weather was showing lowest temperatures in the middle of the night at 17 degrees celsius you don't need a coat in that weather so I don't know whether there's some sort of feels like factor, even though there's not really any wind which is making it colder, or whether the forecast was just wrong, but yeah, it has been chilly, which I don't understand because Kenya is on the equator. So why is it cold? Why does it feel like England in autumn? Anyway, you're fully up to speed now, that's the update. Good shot, Kate. Three to five days. So I just made it to the campfire. Did it ahead of time. We've got a dry martini and it's delicious. And it's thunder and lightning, but not raining. I don't think you'll be able to see anything, but sun setting over there on this magical safari day. Are always showing us the I can't step. really yeah. relax with my back to this <laughs> dark patch of grass. <laughs> Jenna just got chased back wrong. into her tent by a bunch of baboons, which a guy who works here had to run at, shaking a room key to get them to go away. I've been very lucky. The soup's describing itself. So what I've literally had to stay, Pork had and to, mash. chose to stay back during hurricanes, in Mexico in particular, because Ooh, it yeah. tends to make good waves, good surf. So last night when I went to jump into bed, I just climbed in as normal, and there's a hot water bottle under there, but imagine, you jump in, you put your leg under, and you feel something furry and warm, like literally like an animal it jumped out of my skin so so this morning when i was speaking to jenna i said did you have a hot water bottle last night and she said yeah i said and did she went i shit myself <laughs> i was gonna say something else oh yeah um tea was lovely by the way um sat with jenna and um patty so that was nice so six foot nine right so it's probably similar to that not seven foot odd donkey he's obviously wrapped in the the, the masai people outfit and he's got a great big spear so you're just walking along with him like this giant guy with a spear and he comes and brings you right to your door and he's all like where are you from what's your name that's a nice name This could be any man, by the way. It's just a bit intimidating when you know you're on your own. So I've now locked myself into the tent. So if this tent sets on fire, I am toast. But I think on balance it's the best thing to do. Right. Game drive at 6am tomorrow. So, I'll see you then. Night. Good morning. Oh, hello birds. It's day three in the Masai Mara. It's quite chilly again, but it's not raining today. I actually slept really well last night. I've got something in my pants, but I think I'm definitely getting accustomed now. So I'm not worried. I went to the toilet this morning like it was no big deal. So progress has been made. It's six o'clock now, so it's time to go get a coffee and then go for a game drive. So this is what it looks like. It's come out at 6 a.m. Let's go and see if I can get a guard. Found one already. So we've had a cup of coffee and hot milk. The sun is rising. Manfred has told me that I'm going on this morning safari today. 
and then going for a game drive at four and it'll likely be just me and him. So we have to go and walk across the bridge. Granny Safari's beautiful sky over there, which this camera is not showing at all. And a giraffe over there. This zebra has just given birth literally a few minutes ago. It's standing up already. <laughs> it's like it's shaking. Scary birds on the scary tree. It's a hyena right in the middle. I don't know why they're on the ugly five. I think this ugly five needs to be reconsidered. It's like a dog. It's all kicking off now. We've got warthogs running, gazelles running, there's a cheetah running. Not a cheetah, it's a lion. Oh my gosh, so there's like females there, there's a male lion walking. Oh, this female's gonna come close, oh my god. Is the national bird of Kenya. We haven't seen loads today in terms of quantity of animals, but we've seen a brand new zebra and those lions were something else. Can't believe how close they were. I felt like I touched them. Um, I was trying to film on my phone and my camera at the same time. I was like, oh.
was it gonna cry today? The ma. Maybe tomorrow. gone now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is amazing and I just feel so lucky. This is the reception of the camp. I got in about half past 10 after breakfast, after this morning's games drive, this morning's game drive. And then I've just been to sleep. I've been chilling for a little bit, um, a bit on Instagram. And then I've slept for a couple of hours because 5 a.m. get ups every day, followed by late nights, is gonna catch up on me. So I had free time this afternoon. Um, there's not, I didn't feel guilty, not that I'd feel guilty anyway, but some people would say, why would you go to sleep? Make the most of it. There's not really that much you can do. You can't go and walk around for obvious reasons. On the campsite, they've got a, a culture tent, which is set up like a bit of a museum with information, things like that. I'll probably go and check that out on the gap between lunch and my 4 p.m. game drive. It's two o'clock now, lunch finishes at half past two, so I'm gonna head over there. Jenna and Patty have now gone, so that's it. Our little friend group is broken. Maybe we were the lucky three that made us have such a great time. Who knows? I am at one with nature now. I'm just, I'm not worried. Before I was scared of that lizard by the sink. There's now three hanging there, chilling. It's fine. What I am still concerned about, <laughs> and why I'm still looking around a bit, is baboons. Because apparently there's a lot of them at the site. Jenna and Patty were hearing them all the time. They were running all over the top of the tent. I haven't seen one here, which is weird. But I was going to sit on the terrace for a bit, but I was worried because what if a baboon came along? I wouldn't know what to do. They were saying, just stay still, it won't do anything. But what if I want to get up and I have to leave and I have to walk past it? Is it going to get scared and attack me? I've got no idea. So anyway, the situation hasn't arisen. But bugs, I'm okay. Everything else is okay. It's just the baboons are still, I'm a bit on edge about those. Um, but the weather has totally changed. It is really warm today really really quite hot so i'm gonna go and get a gin and tonic something which i've forgotten to tell you is that one of these tents number nine so i'm 13 over there 12 11 they all look the same but number nine is called obama tent guess why because barack obama's only bloody stayed there like no way that's cool it was before he was president so hot now. Where has this come from? Today we've got blue skies with clouds, but the cloud, the heavy cloud cover is gone. I think that's why it's suffocating me. I never want to leave here. I just got to the restaurant and this guy goes, hi Kate. I'm like, how do you know this? And he said, I've set you up a special table for lunch um, on the grass between the trees. I was like, oh, no way. So this is my special table. I absolutely love it at this camp. Um, I don't know if I've said where I am, but it's the Base Camp Explorer camp. This place is so amazing that I feel like they've just ruined the rest of the trip because I don't want to leave and I don't want to go to Serengeti and go and see my other camp because it's not going to be as good. <laughs> the, the service is just a next level, like coming in, giving you a hot water bottle at night, things like that. Um, the people are so nice and so friendly. Everyone comes over and chats to you. Everyone knows your name. Uh, what else? Oh, the game driver. I'm going to be devastated when I go on a game drive with somebody else. Well, no, I'm going to be devastated when I don't get to go on game drives with Manfred anymore because um, I just feel really... He's the best. <laughs> what are the chances that he's the best? We might all be great, but I've just connected to him. So, feeling like I don't want to leave you. I'm going to be comparing 
my next camp and my stay at the Serengeti to this and it, this has set one hell of a benchmark don't know how anything's gonna gonna match it so for lunch i've got cream of pumpkin soup i wonder what the word's gonna be on it and then the options were spaghetti meatballs which i don't like so i've gone for the vegetarian option of some sort of vegetarian tart vegetable tart and then a banana mousse which sounds good oh you get this thing called safari eyes which is where you start to be able to spot animals by yourself which sounds weird but when you first come like you're looking around I thought someone was coming then. Um, you're looking around and you're like, there's no animals here. And then your guide will go, look, there's an ostrich. And you're like, where? You're looking and there's nothing. And then you go, oh, but yeah, there was an ostrich. And you know, why is my hair doing pippy long stocking like that? What the hell? Get down here. But all the time, your guides are pointing things out, which you're totally blind to until you point them out and then you see them. But when you've been here for a little while, um, you get your safari eyes and you start to notice the animals yourself which it, it that i know that sounds like crap but honestly it's true mm. i was so thirsty i was when i was having a nap then i was freaking boiling hot so i've woken up parched my soup says kate on it very cute oh cheers <laughs> i'm gonna show you what i've been taught about taking a phone nope taking a photo on your phone through your binoculars so you need to put your phone on portrait mode and then put it at two or three times zoom. will only work on portrait mode and it'll only work if it's zoomed in. And then you put your camera up to the binoculars and then you have to just wriggle around and see. So if you can see that now, now, oh, can you see that? I couldn't show you live because I'm reaching over the camera, which is, oh God making me very wobbly, but these are the photos that you get. So, oh, there's my lunch. There's my soup. It says Kate in it, with a C. Um, so, you know, it, it definitely could be worse. Oh, there's its arse. Jenna had one of those massive, big lenses. <laughs> and um, when she took the picture, it made that really satisfying ch -ch sound. And I was so jealous. And she was like zooming in and getting all these details of the animals' faces. Um, there my, my iPhone and my binoculars, which I wasn't even doing for the, the first day because it was only when Patty told me how to do it. Um, shout out. This looks good. You're also advised not to eat salad because it might have been prepared using the tap water. Oh, everything's a dilemma. I'm just going to go and have a look at this little lookout up here. I just went on that little lookout platform to take some pictures so I had my phone propped up and my camera propped up and I was like leaning against the thing like trying to get a picture which was flattering um, and the whole time I was having lunch I could see that lookout and nobody went by it in fact I've never seen somebody go to that lookout the whole time I've been here but the second I go up there everyone wants to go up there I literally was like oh, hi look at those plants Oh, I like them. Um, I've got half an hour before my game drive, so I'm just throw my hat on the floor. Nice. Let's go and see what's in here. So they must be wildebeest skulls. So we've seen those out and about. But this, what is this? An elephant skull. It's absolutely huge, and that. Is probably the most shocking of all. That buffalo compared to that wildebeest. Well, it's easily twice as big, maybe three times as big. That is massive and horrifying. A giraffe skull. It's two little horns. I don't know what that thing next to it is. That looks like a paddleboard or zebra skull. Zebras have got to be the most disrespected animal here. Well, oh, hello. Um, because the drivers just don't care about them. It's like us seeing a sheep or something. They just drive right past. Nobody's interested in the zebras. What's this? I still don't know. Oh, an impala. Maybe. I've not seen any wild dogs. I'd like to see them. How adorable are they? Look at their ears. 
we've seen hyenas but i've not got any good pictures or videos of them but they make this noise like ooh, which you can hear from your tent at night how are they in the ugly five that is cute look at the weather now and how full the river is compared to this morning oh actually i didn't show you this morning it's wobbling like mad <laughs> there's a pumba with two tiny babies i wonder if it's the same one from the river on the first day this is my last game drive in the Maasai Mara which I'm honestly really really good about um, let's see if I can get through one at least one without crying at something Manfred asked me what I would like to see and obviously you never know, know but um, I said elephants I'd love to see some more elephants uh, the wind has really picked up and there's a massive storm over there it's all well, this is rain it's really obvious in real life, I'm not sure if you can see. <laughs> These buffalo are huge. I didn't appreciate until I saw the skull how big they actually are. There's one in front of the jeep and it looks like a moose. It's absolutely ginormous. There's one over there. Manfred said again about how dangerous they are. Real loose cannons. Oh my gosh, look at that. We, oh, are we gonna go past that? Oh my god! Little? Little? <laughs> look at this wildebeest um, skull. Still got fur on. Oh, it's still got a personality. I love going over these things, it's so fun. Ooh. Footprints in the mud. There's a lion in the grass over there. The fur is almost the same colour as the grass, it's so hard to spot. And like they're trying to make a coordination, so those guys are moving on that side. Right. Going towards the zebra. They're going to get a zebra. Come again? They might get a zebra. Maybe, yeah. and I just saw right in her mouth and just saw all of her teeth but I didn't film it so this is the view from the other side of the jeep where you see the zebras walking across and that's what the lions are staring at so where that rock is there there's a lion crouching down right by it and apparently if they do go for it they'd all just start to sprint at once and we'll chase them in the van Oh, the baby behind, the baby zebra. Oh no. Oh, she's looking at the zebra. She's really looking because the pond just blocked her view. Oh, the body language. So the zebra's bolted. boys who were looking at the zebras.
Bless you. <laughs> this is a, a boy. But he's two years, so he's not got his full mane yet. Hi, pretty boy. Next to a big pile of poo. is when all the hyenas come out and the sun goes down. Can you, I don't know if you can see it walking along the horizon, but we've seen quite a few of them. There's another one over there, but you definitely won't be able to see, so I <laughs> don't know why I'm telling you. So cool. That's another great game drive done. I don't know how a game drive wouldn't be great. Time for me to go and get a guard, an escort, go for dinner. So it's the Maasai night tonight, so it's traditional African food. And then there's some after dinner entertainment. Um, so we'll see what that is. Not had any entertainment yet. Look at this, we've got lamb and chicken. Hi. <laughs> you know how I say that they've made a fuss of me. Look at my table tonight. I'm literally sat right in front of the fire. Must be the best seat in the house. Because I'm leaving tomorrow. I've got my soup says. Tomorrow um, I'm gonna have breakfast. Thank you. At six. And then we're gonna leave at 6.30 to go on a mini game drive and then go to the airport because my flight is at eight. Which means Ooh, again. That's not a bit of me, that. I got the, what I presume is barbecued chicken and lamb, which you saw before, with some greens, I'm not sure what they are. Mashed potatoes, chapati, the peanut sauce. And then this is ugali, which is, I think they said it's made with maize. It's some sort of common traditional African food. So no idea what that's gonna be like, but let's give it a go. There's a bat flying around. It's going round and round these lights. <clears throat> and if anybody knows me, they know that I do not like bats. So I'm at one with the bugs now. Not the baboons, which I still don't believe there are any. Or bats. And look how pink I am. It's because this fire. Well, lovely in theory. Ooh, this is pretty toasty. <laughs> Every table doing this. I should really do is end the vlog and then take my clothes off and get in bed but here we are again that dancing was cool um jumping like they're on trampolines on the bare floor i'd love to give that a go just to see how stupid i look doing that compared to them 
but I'm not just going to get up and just start jumping in the tent. So the reason why they do that, it's part of their traditional dance, is because whoever gets, uh, sorry, whoever jumps the highest gets the girlfriend. Simple as that, you jump for your gal. And what I said last night about the escort guy, the guy who I genuinely believed when I was saying the words was over seven foot tall, um, he is very tall. Yeah, what I was saying about him, I really regret it now. Like, yes, there is basis upon being a bit worried when a guy with his spears walking you to your door alone in the bush, in the pitch black. But he's so nice, he's absolutely lovely. Um, really, really friendly. Supports United. He was a bit gutted that they lost against Arsenal the other day. Um, he found it hilarious when he asked me if I had any hobbies. And I thought, and I said, mm, no. <laughs> Last thing, I do this every time. I didn't get in from my game drive until just gone half six and tea starts at seven and because I knew they had the dancing on tonight, I didn't want to arrive at tea dead late. So I came in, I packed the majority of my stuff up and then um, I just went straight out for tea so I didn't have time for a shower, which means I'm gonna have to shower tomorrow at the crack of dawn in the dark. The darkness I'm okay with now. I mean, ish, ish. I'm not, I'm not shitting myself like I was the first night and I'm able to sleep now which is great. I'm not saying that I love the idea though. Um, but I don't know what my next camp's gonna be like. So if it's like my friends where somebody is literally pouring a bucket of water over your head, then I'd rather do this in the dark. Um, so I'm not gonna wait to get to Tanzania and shower. Also, I might meet the love of my life on the plane. So it's gonna be fresh. Okay, I really am gonna go now. Unless I think of something else.